。想跟主播小编们在微信上直接互动，欢迎扫描二维码添加官方微信。加入好视频粉丝群。美西时间二零二零年七月八号，加州州长在周三的发布会上报告称，二十四小时内，加州新增九千五百例感染病例，这是自疫情开始以来单日新增最高纪录。最近几天，秋季可能重新开放学校已成为近来的主要政治问题。唐纳德·川普总统威胁，要若不恢复线下教学，就要扣留各州的联邦资金。川普周三发推说，在德国、丹麦、挪威、瑞典和许多其他国家，学校开放没有问题。民主党认为，如果美国学校在十一月大选之前开放，对他们来说在政治上是不利的，但是对儿童和家庭来说很重要。如果不开放，可能会削减资金。川普还抨击了美国疾病控制和预防中心发布的重新开放学校的拟议准则，称该协议非常严格且昂贵。州长加文纽森周三拒绝回应川普的资金威胁。坚持认为学校是否重新开放将是一项基于数据的决定。纽森说：“我不担心最新的推文，我可以举几个例子，说明为什么我得出的结论不是我们需要解决的问题。我们需要解决的是安全的重新开放学校。我们需要将其作为一项基本原则，这对我来说是不可商议的。我们必须安全的重新开放学校。” Uh, ad nauseum examples uh, of why uh, I concluded that that's not the issue that we need to address. What we need to address is safely reopening the schools,、uh, and we need to make that a foundational principle.、Uh, that to me is non-negotiable. We have to safely reopen our schools, and we also have to reconcile what is also non-negotiable, and that is we must insist upon learning the beginning of the school year. Uh, we provided, as I mentioned a moment ago, two months of PPE. We are procuring more PPE to provide even more support、uh, for our educational system, not just K through 12, but our preschools and obviously our、uh, system of higher education as well to help support their efforts. That's why we have to continue to do more on face shields,、uh, masks, gloves. Uh, and gowns and the like, deep sanitation uh, and other uh, procurement, which is foundational in terms of safely reopening the schools. Number two, uh, we uh, put together statutory language in our budget that incentivizes the kind of learning that we think is more advantageous, which is in-person learning. But we also provided flexibility in our statutory language in the approved budget. By the way, that includes five billion dollars for learning loss. And safely reopening the school system, support that we were able to draw down from the federal government already. So I think that's an important point、uh, to note.、Uh, and we are providing、uh, the flexibility based upon local conditions.、Uh, I know it sounds almost like a mantra, but it's foundational. In a state again as large as California, a thousand plus school districts,、uh, conditions are unique and distinctive. Classrooms. Physical classrooms are such where you can't have the physical distancing that you can in other classroom environments in different parts of the state. All of these things、uh, need to be managed at the local level、uh, with the foundational framework of keeping our kids and, as you suggest, Jeremy, our teachers healthy and safe. And yes, I fear that more than I fear a tweet. I fear that as a foundational principle of responsibility to protect. Our caregivers, our teachers,、uh, to protect their support staff, janitors, the bus drivers,、uh, and our children.、Uh, and obviously, we have a lot of work to do as a society、uh, to mitigate the spread of this disease. That will be foundational in terms of making a data-informed decision on how to safely、uh, reopen our schools.、Uh, but foundationally, we need to require learning, and that has. To occur, and so we are working very closely with our partners. We put out guidelines on June 5th, laying out our specific、uh, strategies. We've been modifying that and working with our partners, Superintendent of Public Education,、uh, and many others.、Uh, and、uh, we'll be saying a lot more on this topic over the course of the next days and weeks. 根据《泰晤士报》追踪者的数据，在过去的一周里。平均每天有七千四百零三例新的冠状病毒感染病例和六十九点六例新的死亡病例。
。随着病例的持续增加和住院人数的增加，加州各县被迫推迟重启时间，以阻止病毒的传播。州长加文纽森周三表示，随着全州冠状病毒病例持续激增，加利福尼亚州正在采取行动，准备满足不断增长的医院护理需求。Uh, with coronavirus case numbers increasing, with positivity rates increasing in the state, with hospitalization rates and ICU rates increasing in the state of California, as we move forward on March 19th of this year, uh, we, with intention, began a process anew to identify those foundational components so that we can meet the needs of those that need to access. Hospital care and receive high-quality care in the state of California, and to look to utilize our existing hospital footprint, the capacity that exists within a hospital setting and within the larger hospital campus setting, to build capacity. In addition to that, of course, we look to identify alternative care sites all throughout the state of California. You may recall a few months back we talked about FMS. These were the federal medical stations that we were able uh, to get from the federal government. We identified locations throughout the state of California to pre-position uh, those FMS sites that provide capacity up to 250 uh, beds to meet the medical needs of uh, the system, to help decompress the hospital system, to provide alternative care sites uh, to meet the needs of patients uh, that either were pre-symptomatic, asymptomatic, or in some instances were not in need of acute care but need of intense medical care uh, that may have been exposed to COVID-19. We identified additional sites uh, throughout the state, including old mothball hospitals, Seton being an example in Northern California. Uh, we had identified early on St. Vincent uh, down in LA County. Uh, we procured sites that are still under contract in Fairview and Porterville, different parts of the state up here in Sacramento, the old sleep train arena uh, where now the Sacramento Kings used to play. Uh, those sites, uh, many of those sites uh, still uh, available to us in what we call warm status, all part and parcel uh, of a larger portfolio to meet the needs uh, as we see an increase in the spread and transmission of COVID-19. Speaking of spread, this slide gives you a sense of what our existing hospital footprint looks like in the state of California. Uh, we have 416 hospitals uh, in this state, but one thing you'll see from the slide is they're not equally distributed in various parts of the state. Let me give you a specific example. You have roughly, plus or minus a few thousand, but roughly 21,000 plus licensed hospital uh, beds in LA, as an example. In Sutter County, you have just 14. So depending on where you live, uh, the assets uh, that are available to you are quite distinctive. And you can imagine where you have an increase of just a few patients in your ICUs in Sutter, that can represent a huge percentage of your total capacity. So, so often I make this point in presentations like this. I give you information in the aggregate but remind you that none of us live in the aggregate. We live in cities and counties throughout the state of California, populated uh, with different density in terms of total number of people, but also a different density of assets. And so over the course of the last number of months, we've been looking to procure strategies in a very strategic uh, and mindful way of where those deserts of support were, uh, from testing uh, to tracing and tracking uh, to addressing uh, the acute care needs uh, as well as meeting the needs more broadly uh, of communities throughout uh, this remarkably diverse, the nation's largest and most populous state. Uh, we had a plan when we started in March uh, that had a surge capacity uh, within our hospital system of roughly 20% uh, of that current capacity uh, that we often identify. And I'll give you those numbers in a minute. And those were around the 75,000 hospital capacity number that so often uh, I promoted uh, as a baseline of existing capacity. It's a little less today, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, we had no established alternative care sites, meaning we didn't have the FMS identified, we didn't have these alternative leases and sites already procured and established. We were 
just in the process in March of identifying if Seton would be interested in engaging a contract with the state, working with the legislature to procure uh, resources beyond just emergency resources to establish a longer term framework of support. Uh, we did not have prepositioned medical assets of any type, uh, and including PPE, which I'll get to as well in a subsequent slide. Today, in July, fast forward, uh, we now have capacity to treat 50,000 uh, COVID-19 patients, well beyond that surge capacity at 20 percent. We have, as I said, built out these alternative care sites, uh, the physical sites. We have secured hospitals like Seton, uh, and we have pre-positioned a lot of these medical assets, those FMS uh, sites throughout the state of California and areas uh, that were vulnerable to surges and spikes in COVID-19. Uh, we also focus not just on the physical. As I said, it's place, space, people. This slide represents people. We started something called California Health Corps. Uh, it exceeded all expectations. We quite literally had no expectation that if more than a few thousand people may avail themselves with a valid license uh, and provide information about their professional uh, capacity to sort of meet needs uh, based upon a matching criteria and protocol uh, that began to take shape in terms of needs for LVNs and RNs and respiratory specialists and the like over the course of the last number of months. Uh, we've been rescrubbing that site. Over 96,000 people uh, went to that site, filled out the initial application, uh, but about 35,000 of those applications have valid licenses uh, for professional needs. It's important to note, we haven't updated this in some time, uh, we have been able already to deploy. We haven't needed all these folks. We've just identified these folks. But we did find the need for 741 professionals uh, that helped us with some of our skilled nursing facilities, our adult daycare facilities. They're actually helping us currently uh, with our corrections facilities and providing staffing and expertise, and as well providing alternative care facility personnel support. So that system, uh, the development of this site, uh, California Health Corps site, which by the way, if you are a professional, you may have retired recently, you may be interested in being supportive as we've seen these numbers increase, I'd encourage you to go to the covid19.ca.gov website to fill out an application as well. Uh, again, we don't want everybody concentrated filling out applications just in one part of the state. It's really about matching need in different parts of the state based upon different professions within the healthcare uh, system. And so uh, you may have a unique uh, experience, unique perspective, a unique license uh, in part of the state that's significantly underserved. You're exactly the kind of person we would encourage you to go to that site, fill out the application, uh, provide your license information, and we'll make sure uh, over the course of the next number of days and weeks to get back and contact you. 以上就是本期聚焦的全部内容，我们下次再见。